I'm Dana Hahn Klein here with Jason Reitman, Jay Carson, and Matt Bai for the front runner. What do you all admire most about Gary Hart? About Gary Hart? Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a great question. I mean, uh, look, uh, Gary Hart is a really interesting pH test in that you have uh, a candidate who was charismatic and had great ideas, was very smart, um, and could and could speak off the cuff about any you know anything politically and and has proven to be extraordinarily prescient and at the same time was a human being and was flawed and made mistakes and and because of that uh raises these questions about what what we are interested in uh on a human level on a personal level with our candidates and particularly in 2018 what flaws are we willing to put up with there's a there's an interesting thing, one of the things I love about a writing process is that you go into it thinking you're writing about one thing and then as, the, as you peel the layers back you realize you learn more about why you were drawn to it and you learn more about the story you're writing about. I can't count how many times I've seen this movie, but one of the recent times I saw it, it struck me that, that one of the things that I'm drawn to about his story, unlike a lot of my experience working in politics, which I did for a really long time, there are things he won't do to get himself out of a crisis. That is an extraordinary thing to say about our politics now. Part of what you see in this story, this moment where everything changes in 88, are we, we begin to draw kind of two, sort of two types of people to the process after this. People that have lived like these abnormally squeaky clean lives from the time they were five years old until they run for office with the eye on being the president their whole life, which is just weird. Or people that are totally shameless and will do, have done anything they wanted and will do anything that they can possibly do to be elected to whatever office they're going for. And what you see in Gary Hart is a guy that says, no, it would actually be bad for me to trot my kids out, trot my, my, everyone in my family out, lie to the press for another three or four weeks and get through it. It used to be my job in politics to teach people how to do that stuff, to get out of a crisis and watching someone that won't do that. There's some, I don't know, there's something sort of inspiring in that. Yeah, I would echo a, a, a lot of what Jay said, and I guess the way I would put it is that, to me, the fascinating conundrum about Hart, and one of them has always been that he's forever exiled from American politics for a uh, an insufficiency of character, and that's the word that comes, you know, into vogue at that moment and surrounds him. But I don't, I don't know how else you describe someone who, as Jay said, you know, holds to underlying principles at the expense of all personal ambition, if not with the word character. So to me, you know, the, it, what the what that that is something I admire about Hart, and I think it's something we ask of a, of an audience is how do you define character, and and um, how do you make sense of uh, this this dichotomy where on on one hand he's you know, fatally flawed morally, but on the other hand, can't get himself past it because he adheres so firmly to that moral code. And um, I think, I don't think there's an easy answer. I think people come away with different answers and we'll probably argue about that point, hopefully. But, uh, but it is, you know, to me, it's the thing about him that's always stood out. What do you say to people who are experiencing like extreme political fatigue right now? Because this movie did not, like I didn't feel hope at the end necessarily, mm -hmm. just because there's such a great dichotomy between like what we held candidates accountable for then and say what we're holding candidates accountable for now. Or, or not. Or not. Why do people not feel great about politics? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, we're, it's such an, you know, it's an interesting moment because uh, politics in a weird way have become our entertainment. You know, we don't talk about the Sopranos episode, we talk about the Kavanaugh hearings or, you know, whatever else just happened in the last 24 hours. Um, and... Uh, and so we think of politics as a story, and it raises this question, of course, of you know, what is relevant, what is important versus what is entertaining. Uh, and certainly when we started this process, I and mean, this process started uh, a decade ago for Matt, uh, a little more recent than that for Jay, and more recently for me, but this, for me it started in 2015 when I heard this Radio Lab piece that was centered around Matt's book, um, and already, I felt as though there were threads in that book that led us to 2018. I, I do think that we, we tried to make a movie, we tried to write a movie, Jason made a movie that's a, that's a human story. 
So it, whether you've never voted before and don't care about politics at all, we hope that, this, that there's something accessible in this movie for you because you're watching human beings in a difficult situation. You can strip away the fact that the guy's running for president, there are staffers and journalists around them. Mm -hmm. These are people um, who, are, who are trying to figure out how to get themselves out of the worst week of a lot of their lives. Yeah, I mean, speaking as a consumer, of, uh, as well as, you know, not, you know, not only someone writes about it, but as a, as a consumer of news and books about politics and movies about politics, I think people will get fatigued because they, there's a sameness to it and, it, and it's often, it's somebody telling you what to think or reinforcing what you think. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I think people will be pleasantly surprised in that the film, uh, doesn't tell you what to think. It's not a message movie. It's not. There's no choir to which we're preaching, uh, and and it doesn't. It's a story set in the world of politics, but it's about people, like Jason says. It's about and at the heart of it is this, no pun intended, this super compelling character and this really suspenseful, week. This very you know cinematic true story. So uh, I don't. I I I totally get uh, people's fatigue, but I don't think you know. I I, I do think this is bigger than you know just just another political message. And I don't want to speak for all three of us, but I think I do, but we also, we take hope in the fact that your generation is fed up. My eternal monologue is just constant screaming right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like every day. Ours is too. Yeah, so. yeah, no, I know, yeah. Feel free to externalize that. Yeah, 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 no, no, I, I literally went from like this to a, seeing the movie to a different interview and I was just like, I need a minute. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Um, if you had to hold political office now, what would it be and why? <laughs> I got it. Yeah, I'm going to go yeah, first. Yeah, please. <laughs> I have no idea. This is why now was the caveat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would want, I, I, if I had to, I would it's, never want to run for, for a lot of the reasons that we explore in this movie, I would never want to run for office. Wait, do we have to run for it or you just give us the, the just office? give us the office. I'll say give you the office. Oh, oh wow. Yes. Look at that. Uh, it, apparently we're handing out positions these days exactly. to anybody. Um, so. The commissioner of Major League Baseball. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mayor, actually. What? We were talking about this this morning, breakfast. Yeah. What I found to be uh, disheartening about working in federal office was the distance between what we did and, and the people that we were affecting, whether positively or negatively, usually negatively. Um, and the inability to see that allows you to just go through your day making decisions in Washington and well, who really gives a shit because you don't ever see it or feel it. Your life doesn't really change. Um, and local office, you see it. You close the street and piss people off, you're gonna hear about it. You're gonna see it. You're gonna get stuck in the traffic too. And there was a closeness to the decisions you make that felt a lot more like making art and writing um, and doing what I do now that I really like about local office. It's tactile. I, you know, whatever position I could be put in to refund the <laughs> EPA or the National Endowment of the Arts, I think uh, that's probably what that's really that's right. for you. You see, yeah. Jason had Jason is the head of the arts. Uh, you really could actually. <laughs> but what if Jason's uh, the head of OMB? That's the most attainable of any of us, really. Um, <laughs> Jason's the head of OMB. That could work, actually. Yeah. yeah. I vote for you, by the way. I vote for you for president. I, who I would vote for is Hugh Jackson. Yeah, we would like to get uh, you. Like, we're I, trying to get him to run. We're just trying several uh, offices. Uh, yeah. But he's, can, Australia. he's an Australian, Australian so yeah. it's... So. But he could be the, he could be the you know, Prime Minister of Australia. Also but the rules video. don't matter anymore. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, what, what rules are we following? <laughs> Why let this fantasy draft political version? Why let yeah. the Constitution get in the way of like, honestly, being president? We do live in a moment in which if you said, yeah, but I'm running, I think it's going to be like, uh, uh, okay, yeah. and then just kind of go with that. Yeah, I, I'll just write his name in. Yeah. And you just show up. You show up at the front gates and... Why don't Schwarzenegger was our governor? Like, right. what's to stop anything? Yeah. Right. Well, and probably would run for president had it not Oh, yeah, I tried. For that. Again, you rules don't matter anymore. The Constitution is a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. It's a Banksy piece of art. Um, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be impressive if, if Banksy could get the Constitution to shred within its safe. I think it is be. already shredded. My last question is, how do you define success now, and how has that changed from earlier in your career? Wow. Uh, okay. Uh, this has been a very unusual interview. This is um, super unusual. <laughs> I like this. Uh, okay. No, uh, success... Uh, you know, it's, it's a great question. And... And when I was younger, I looked at the finish line, and that's all I thought about was get the movie done, get the movie done. And uh, it really wasn't until I think my fourth film that I started to stop and enjoy the process of making films, and it, it, you know really appreciate the gift that it is to watch 
great actors in real time perform and and work with uh, great storytellers and craftsmen in real time. So my I love the process of making movies. I love that I get to make them with uh, people who are my friends or people who inspire me. And so now I look forward and as a future sign of success is to kind of keep being passionate about the work that I get to do. As the son of a mother, um, I, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, I, I echo Jason's. I mean, this is my second career, so you're, you're focused on something very different in politics. It is, it is, it is about the finish line. It's about winning. Um, and what I love about doing this for a living is not about that. And I actually really enjoy the doing of it. Um, and it's great to have been a part of writing a movie um, and to see it finished and to be really happy with it um, and to be okay with that. And you know, you hope everyone goes to see it, but it was an incredible process for me to be a part of it. We, we processed a lot about, you know, I processed a lot about my heartbreak with politics and getting to do this mm -hmm. and, and, and here it is. And that's just, that feels, that feels awesome. And that is so different than, than a campaign. I, I the, the process of writing, of finding this story, writing this book, and and, and having done the movie with these guys is uh, sort of central to my redefinition, I think, in, of what success constitutes for me. I mean, earlier in my career, and I don't think this is uncommon. You know, as a writer, I always wanted to do work that other people would validate and and that, that would you know receive a lot of external attention or approval. I think uh, you know I've come to a point. And I'm older than these guys. I've come to a point where, like, uh, you know, success for me is doing something I believe in and, and being able to do it, being able to get up every day, have the means to do it, and bring it to other people. I think this is a story that the world needed to revisit. I think this is a story people need to hear now and think about. I, I've devoted a lot of my life over the last decade to, 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 to having this story out there, and now, you know, in, in this in this terrific way in a new format. And I think, you know, that's to me. Um, you know that's that's the most important thing you you can do as, as a writer. How do you define success? It, it changes when you find something. Let me know. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Um, no, I think it changes, right? Because it's like at first it's like yeah, uh, paying your rent, <laughs> and now it's like yeah. oh now now you're yeah. really cool. You can pay your rent. Yeah. What's next? And like I think it also needs to be a moving target because I think if you think you've hit success, then you have failed because yeah. you have plateaued and you have become complacent. That's well the, said. The problem is it can't always be moving, right? If it's always moving, this is what I saw in politics where it's like, oh, if I'm just doing this and then you're doing it and you say, okay, well, this isn't enough. Now I gotta be doing this. And yeah. You will all, there will always be yeah. someone. Moving, moving in always, a track. Yeah. I'll least, tell you something really. else I think all three of us would share, and I, I'll speak for these guys and say it's not true, but I, I think all of us, it's one of the reasons we've had so much fun doing this, that all of us in some, in some measure define success by pushing our own boundaries and learning new things and doing new things. So Jason did a kind of film that he's not done before. Mm. Jay moved to an entirely different career to grow, you know, and I'm, and I'm doing a, a different kind of writing than I had done in the rest of my life. And, you know, I think that for all of us, the process of trying something new, trying to master it, trying to find the intricacies of it, that's, that's, you know, that's part of success too. Well, as the daughter of a mother, thank you all so much. <laughs> you <laughs> girl, so much. Oh my god! Really? <laughs> Shocking, That's right? Crazy. You must have an amazing response. <laughs> <Right? laughs> I now understand. Now Actually, you can say as the daughter of a father. The daughter of a father. Thank you all so much, and congrats You're on this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.